Hello, ASM artists. Bard is my favorite class in D&D. College of Whispers is, to me, the most evocative and most flavorful Bard subclass. And it's also widely considered the worst subclass for the Bard. That is disgusting. Ew. So what if we took it for a ride and gave it a spin? I'm Antonio Namiko, this is Poonyad, and we're gonna look at College of Whispers and make a whole new version of it in this brand new episode of... Whatever this is, I don't know if it'll be a series yet. We shall see if y'all like it. Working title. That's right, y'all know I like coming up with new stuff on this channel, and for every class I cover, I like to give y'all a free subclass. And Bard was the very first class I covered, on the very first video I ever did, like two years ago. Which in YouTube years is close to 74 BC. But sometimes, I want to talk about a specific subclass, either because I have an idea for one, but we already covered that class, and I don't want to remake a video just yet, because it literally only has been two years since I started this channel, and that would be crazy. Or because an existing subclass has either something I find interesting and want to make my own, store-bought is not fine, or because I have a bone to pick with it and I want to take my own stab at it. And College of Whispers is sort of both of those last two options. So I'm taking a stab at subclass-centered videos. Picking a theme, another subclass, whatever I decide, taking a closer look at it, dissecting it, there's a lot of stabbing imagery in this video for some reason, and then making my own that I can share with y'all for 100% pointy hat free, like a mummy bird regurgitating into the mouth of its children. Yay. Let's see if y'all dig this, and if you do, I'll continue at it. So, why don't we take a look at what College of Whispers is and figure out what's going on. College of Whispers was introduced in Zenithar's Guide to Everything in 2017, so nearly six years ago, alongside stuff like College of Swords, which people have debated a lot on, and they sure have debated a lot on College of Whispers too. But let's start this subclass analysis where it shines. It's lore. Whisper Bards have the coolest lore of all Bard subclasses. This is definitely not because it reminds me of Dragon Age. Shut up, you can't prove it! Whisper Bards take advantage of the affable and harmless reputation of Bards to do their dark biddings in and out of the internet. Bards are welcome at any party and in the halls of any court, and that's what Whisper Bards prey on. They infiltrate places by hiding in plain sight, and once in, they start their actual work. They are the James Bond Bard. They are experts in espionage, deceit, extortion, and just generally not playing fair and being big bad meanies. Their college literally teaches them that they are wolves in sheep's clothing, and that's why other Bards hate them. 9 out of 10 Bards cannot stand whisper bards and i love this so much this situation is so dire that most whisper bards actively hide that they studied the ways of asmr pretending they belong to a different college and keeping their mouth sounds and 10 hours 70 different trigger compilations to the shadows okay pause this this right here this is sick this is so sick this i love this bards are the designated comic relief class in DD, and flipping that on its head is genius i am once again, reminded of Dragon Age. I'm sorry, I just have a terminal disease where I just talk about it 24-7. All my loved ones hate me. In Dragon Age, all bards are whisper bards. And they rely on the fact that having a bard at your party, like party party, not like D&D party, is such a status symbol that nobility keeps inviting them despite knowing that they're most definitely scheming something. I love it so much. The College of Whispers lore is evocative. It explores an area of bards that is both a natural fit and yet no other subclass explores. And it's honestly my absolute favorite in terms of flavor. But you've seen the title of this video. So... Abilities. Okay, I'll present these abilities as they are for now, and you guys can LARP with me as the jury in this trial. I'll give my thoughts later, after this. First up, Magical Brew. Whisper Bards are all about seeming, appearing benign, harmless, safe. They might lure you in with the most magical brew you've ever tasted, realizing too late that it was in fact actually magical brew. A concoction so perfect that it lulls you into coziness and security. A perfect place for a Whisper Bard to strike. I mean, it might not be a real ability, but I feel like a Whisper Bard would do that. Or at least I feel like they would be a fan of the whole coffee and tea concept of Many Worlds Tavern. That's right, they've come back to sponsor this video. Many Worlds Tavern is an online coffee, tea, and gaming company. And guess what? They're now expanding into actual 5e supplement content. Other than producing some amazing, amazing teas and coffees, specially designed for you to share at your gaming table, they have just launched Wayward Wonders, their patron monthly D&D supplements. Every month, they release a bunch of stuff. 20 magic items, four NPCs, two spells, and even a full campaign setting prompt. All of it, of course, beautifully illustrated by artists from around the world. And their whole concept is that you can pair these, or your existing campaign for that matter, with some amazing coffees and teas, including specially chosen coffees and teas for that month. And guess what? If you subscribe to their Wayward Wonders patron this month, like 
right now, you automatically enter a raffle to win a six full month subscription to any Many Worlds Tavern coffees or teas, even if you enter at the free tier. So whether you're more of a tea bard or a coffee bard, or if a bunch of supplements for 5e monthly sounds good to you, go check out their Patreon. It's the very first link in the description. And now that we've had a coffee break, let's look into actual abilities this time. Psychic Blades is the Whisper Bard's signature use of inspiration. All Bard subclasses give you something to do other than hand out inspo candy to your party members. And Psychic Blades is one of the only selfish uses of Bardic Inspiration. When you hit someone with a weapon, you can spend one Bardic Inspiration to use your ASMR powers to exploit their misophonia and make them cringe themselves out of their skull, dealing 2d6 psychic damage. This can only happen once per round, just like Divine Smite. Oh, oh, oops. Sorry, I guess not anymore. This has basically the same type of scaling damage as Sneak Attack, working basically as like a damage burst option for the Bard, which is certainly unique. Words of Terror is an exclusively roleplay-centered ability. If you yap at someone for a whole minute straight, they have to succeed on a wisdom saving throw. If they fail, your yapping was so mortifying that they become so terrified of you or another creature of your choice so they gain the frightened condition for one whole hour or until someone bunks them over the head like a Looney Tune. Also, it stops if their friends get hit too. And then you cannot yap anymore until you finish a short or long Mimir. Important to note here that this is not a charm, so it bypasses any charm immunity. This is done through your creepy pasta narrator voice alone. Burger King foot lettuce. The last thing you'd want in your Burger King burger is someone's foot fungus. But it is literally written to not be used in combat, or around combat, or in the general vicinity of combat, or while anyone thinks about the general concept of combat. So... Oh boy, I wonder if this will be a trend. Mantle of Whispers is another exclusively roleplay-centered ability. When a humanoid dies, just croaks it while you're making tapping sounds on 34 different items in a 30-foot radius, you can use your Peter Pan powers to steal their shadow. You can then spend a whole ass action to put the lotion on your skin to actually wear this person's shadow, after which you look like the dead person and you will know everything they would share about themselves to a casual acquaintance, which I guess depends on if this person was an oversharer that tells you within five minutes of meeting them every sordid detail about their family-based trauma, you can wear the skin suit, I mean, shadow for one hour, and people can see through it in a contested check against your deception. But you do get a flat plus five to that check, so good luck to whoever wants to clock your evil plastic surgery powers. Oh, and you can only do this once before needing a short mimir, but how many people that you want to pass yourself off as are you skinning in between short rests, really? Please say less than two. Shadow lore is... Yet another roleplay-centric ability, the third one in a row. Hmm, I wonder what will be addressed in the second part of this video. Anyway, keeping it neutral. This allows you to charm a creature for eight hours if they fail a saving throw, say it with me, until they get bumped in the hand like a Looney Tune by you or your friends. The way you charm them is interesting. It's through the whimsical power of magical extortion. You whisper to them their most mortifying secret, something that this creature would sooner die rather than be made public. You have never read the DM's guide cover to cover. Oh god! You, yourself, actually don't know what you whisper. They just hear it as that. So you can't use this to learn some hot hot gauze unless you get creative. But regardless of that, the creature is charmed by you for eight whole hours and will obey your commands so that you don't reveal their dirty- Dirty little secret! Little secret. Don't tell it. This is strong! in roleplay scenarios, especially because at the end of the eight hours, the creature doesn't know it's been charmed, but it's a charm, so... Anyway... And those are all the Whisper Bard subclass abilities. There are four of them, and three of them cannot be used in combat at all. Interesting. Hmm... Okay, I have danced around it long enough. We've talked about the College of Whispers lore and their abilities. How about we give them a new twist? Or whatever catchphrase I can come up with if this series does stick. Let's go! Okay, so I want to make it super clear if it wasn't already, this is probably my favorite Bard subclass when it comes to lore and flavor, and Bard is my favorite class along with Cleric. This is not a hot take, all things are bad, top 10, bad, no good, stupid YouTube fodder. I genuinely believe that there are problems here, and guess what, I'm not the only one. Before starting this video, I put on a hazmat suit and went through different D&D forums for hours, and the community consensus seems to be that the College of Whispers is the weakest Bard subclass. Everyone agrees that the flavor and lore is great, but bring one of these guys to any combat encounter and 
and you'll find pretty quick that these guys do not come close to what other bard subclasses bring to the table in terms of utility when a fight actually happens. And this game where the combat pillar is the most important pillar. So we get it, the Whisper Bard has a bad reputation. But why exactly? Well, let's actually go through what I think the reasons are for our ASMR artist's bad rep. One, roleplay centric versus roleplay onlyist. I actually hate to say this because I absolutely love roleplay centric abilities and I wish we got more of them, but the Whisper Bard has basically only roleplay centric abilities. You get one combat one in your use of inspiration. And it's not like the others are more geared towards roleplay, is that they actively cannot be used in combat. Nearly all of them end when combat starts and if they don't end they don't contribute anything to your combat abilities like mantle of whispers this is a problem and since we touched on inspiration two selfish inspiration so the Whisper Bard is basically the only Bard subclass with a purely selfish use of inspiration. All the others offer some sort of utility to the rest of the party, with some being outright buffs to the rest of the party and some others working more as debuffs that everyone can take advantage of. Now, do not get me wrong, I don't think that this is a problem per se. As a matter of fact, I think this contributes to its unique flavor and identity and I really, really dig it. The problem here is that if you're not going to contribute utility to the party, especially as a Bard, the utility class to end all utility classes, you better make up that with some wild value offered. And this sort of divine smite meets sneak attack just ain't it. College of Valor Bards are technically weaker, as in they deal less damage, but by an extremely low amount, like the difference is not huge, and the College of Valor Bard can deal damage and increase its AC. Or it can give the Bardic Inspiration die to the damage roll of another party member. There are like massive utility options here. This sort of burst damage smitey concept really, really, really doesn't suit the Bard that well at all. Like this may be as good as a rogue slash paladin multiclass, I don't think anything should be designed to reach its full potential in a multi-class though. Like if I tell you this subclass doesn't work and your answer is it's because it's better if you don't actually play it and just cannibalize one of its features to add to another build, well... That's not the gotcha you think it is. Ultimately, Psychic Blades does not justify you picking this over other inspiration options, including the baseline inspo option. And this is double the problem when you know that this is the only combat ability in the subclass. It's also weird that this use of inspiration pushes this bar towards weapon combat, and yet it's the only subclass that does this without giving you two attacks. It also works really, really bad with the 2024 one because bards don't get rapiers anymore. Valor and Swords certainly do this, the whole extra attack thing, but I guess this was to combat E for Whispers. Honestly, sticking a second attack on the Whisper Bard fixes a lot of its combat woes and also giving them rapiers if you're in 2024. A shame that the problem is not just that they have no combat abilities. And speaking of, three, non-special specialist. So the Whisper Bard wants to be the College of Subterfuge, Assassin, Rogi, Spy Bard. And yet a lot of what it can do can be done by other classes or subclasses either better or with way less of a hassle. Anything you can do, I can do better. To be clear, once again, I love the flavor of all of these abilities, but is the flavor worth it? Yes, Mantle of Whispers is f***ing sick, but is that worth it over Mask of Many Faces? Is that worth it over honestly simply using this guy's self? Reminder that you're supposed to use this in roleplay heavy scenarios and you are doing this to know the baseline info of whoever you unalived knew what happens when the hour passes and your skin suit is no more was that worth it did it for the deception boost yes you get that after jumping through seven different hoops you know who also gets this but like 10 times better my favorite bard subclass the eloquence bard who trumps everything when it comes to actually talking to people as in roleplay but also offers you combat utility wow does it really well we anyone doing a bard subclass centered on roleplay should look at that for inspiration, I think. Anyway, the Whisper Bard is extremely specialized and aesthetically perfectly represents the vibe it's going for. But even in its specialization, can be replaced by classes that do it either better or with way less of a hassle. Four, solo mission DD guy. Here's the biggie, here's the one I hate. Lames. I have not yet successfully infiltrated the Wizards of the Coast headquarters. Working on it, I'm still stuck at the laser room. But it feels to me like this subclass was designed to go off on its own and do whatever. So many of its abilities seem almost geared for the Whisper Bard to abandon their party and have like a full little adventure on its own. I'm still lonely. It's, it's very strange. At first you're like, why would they give this guy smite? And then you keep reading and find out that its abilities are like, talk to a guy for a full minute so that they are scared of you. Go off and unalive somebody so that you can wear their skin suit and pretend you're them. Charm a person for eight hours so that they can do whatever you want. And now giving the bard a reliable damage source that undercuts the utility it can give to the party kind of makes sense. It makes sense if the party's not there. Like what kind of magical hitman game is this? I mean, I would love a 
magical headband game, a video game that I play alone. You know what is in that? D&D. The cooperative storytelling game that you play with four other people. Because when you're off on your solo mission, there are three players silently watching you do your thing. Or worse, three players tagging along and doing nothing while their characters watch you as you solo this James Bond mission. It feels downright antithetical to how the game actually plays. Okay, to recap, amazing flavor, amazing lore, but roleplay obsessed rather than roleplay heavy, underwhelming choice of inspo, good at stuff that others already are better at, and weirdly geared to a way of playing D&D that is at best inconvenient to the rest of the players and at worst antithetical to how the game plays. So, what do? Well, as I said, store-bought is fine, but we like to make our own around here. Let's make our own subclass. Okay, so for the first and so far only installment, depending on how well this video does, of whatever this is, we want to revisit the concept of an existing subclass. Maybe if we do this again, we'll make one from scratch without any existing starting point, but today is not that day. So, where to start? This is always the hardest step. Hmm. Human familiar, start now. Human familiar. I'm not tired of this joke yet. Okay, so flavor and lore is not the problem here. We'll change thus enough from the existing Whisper Bart so that it merits existing. But we're keeping the whole subterfuge, lying, espionage, blackmail thing. We don't need to worry about that. Those are staying. Abilities are the key here. Those are the ones that need to change. And as I so subtly pointed out, we're gonna use Eloquence Bart as our measuring sticks. Eloquence is a roleplay-focused subclass that doesn't let combat fall by the wayside. And that's what we want. So I'm using that as inspiration. So here's my thinking. How about we emphasize a theme that is present in Whispers, but that takes a backseat to the main theme of the Whisper Bard. For all the talk about charisma and lies, all the abilities of the Whisper Bard are very roguish, more of an assassin type of deal. Which, don't get me wrong, I love it. But, what if we lean harder on the other direction for this new one? If Whisper is more of an infiltrator, rogue, secret, Asian guy that does very bad things and murders and doesn't go to bed on time and doesn't eat his vegetables, how about this one? is all about subterfuge. Lying, scheming, manipulating. The one that smiles at you as they wait for you to turn around to plunge a dagger in your back. It's an infiltrator, but less like a rogue is and more like a bard can be. Less of a snake waiting to strike in the dark, which is what the Whisper Bard is now, and more of, well, to take from the flavor of the Whisper Bard, a wolf in sheep's clothing. While the Whisper Bard kills you in a dark alley and then wears your shadow as a costume, this other subclass, on the other hand, becomes your best friend, your confidant, your only ally, the only person you trust. And then, they turn around and reveal that they were working with your biggest enemy the whole time. They're a liar! But flavor was the easy part. What about the actual meat of the issue? What about abilities? Well, first we get rid of this half weapon fighter bard thing that the whisper bard is kind of like nudging to, but never committing to. Our new one is going to be a full spellcaster. Simple as that. Oh, also a little note. It's also strange to me that whisper is not one of the subclasses included in the 2024 redesign, since the new bard has gotten rid of rapiers as a proficiency for bards, and that's the best weapon for any bard. And whispers really relied on it because it doesn't give you other proficiencies like valor or swords. I guess that's more of a reason for this. This video to exist. Next, we're taking this theme of lying and we're running all the way to the bank with it. And we're trying to make abilities that work in and out of combat, at least for most of them. Now, for its inspiration use, what if we do the opposite of eloquence? What if instead of debuffing spell saves, we debuff AC for spell attacks? This still allows you to be selfish and cast the next spell yourself to really hit that person, or set up someone else so it's not completely selfish. It offers that utility that we talked about to the rest of the party. You can cause synergy with it. You can make big plays with this. It's more of a Bart thing, without losing the whole selfishness of whispers that I really like. No more being scared of burning a big spell slot on Inflict Wounds. Next up, what if they get a big advantage from casting spells of the Enchantment and Illusion schools? Those feel super great for our theme of lies. What if they get a fun interaction if someone tries to perceive through their illusion? Or if someone tries to insight check one of their lies? Or, or, when someone rolls a wisdom saving throw against one of the bard's effects. That's what I mean by in and out of combat. We want most of these to be good for roleplay and useful in combat and not get rid of the bard's utility. And, hear me out, what if they lie at spellcasting? What if they can pretend to cast a spell and convince someone that they are under that spell without using a spell slot? Imagine if you could lie and convince someone that they are under heat metal, twist their mind into fully believing that they are under a spell that they are quite literally not under. Sort of like expanding on stuff like Phantasmal Force. Okay, I'm inspired. I'll take it from here. The first thing you gotta do when you have this much figured out is to see what it actually looks like as an actual character. Is this inspired? 
firing it off to base a character around? Can you come up with flavor for it? Well, we're about to find out. Leo and Leia have no memories before the orphanage. They don't even know if they are truly brother and sister, just that they were left at the stoop on the same night. A blood relation seems unlikely, since Leo is a tiefling, whereas Leia is a human. Despite a rough start, the siblings showed early on their strong personalities, and would put on plays and sang songs for both kids and adults at the orphanage, and, as they grew older, did the same thing for artists, actors, and socialites, rubbing elbows with the children of the haute société of their home city at nightclubs, gentlemen's clubs, and, in time, lavish noble parties. But Leo always noticed that all invitations were addressed to his sister, he was always the plus one. No matter how many parties he attended, how well he sang and played, how witty and clever he was, it was Leia, equally as witty and talented as he was, who was somehow the only one to receive a second invitation. The brother was a tiefling, and the sister was a human, and no amount of singing and dancing could change that. If Leo's talents were not enough for la crème de la crème of high society, he would use these same talents to subjugate them. Both siblings chose to dedicate themselves to the bardic arts. The sister became a College of Eloquence bard, while the brother became a liar bird, what members of the College of Lies are often called. Leia kept the true allegiances of her brother secret, keeping up the facade that they enrolled in the same college together. But while the sister honed her persuasive capabilities, the brother dedicated himself to mastering illusions and charms, wielding lies and deceit as a weapon. The sibling duo became terrifyingly efficient. Leia would grace formal luncheons, morning calls, and baby showers with her presence, while Leo became a mainstay of less savory celebrations that take place only at night. And then, at twilight and dawn, the two siblings exchanged information they had gathered during their escapades. But the more powerful they grew, the more Leia grew uncomfortable with her brother's methods, and the less Leo felt like his sister understood why he was using those methods in the first place. A rift emerged between them that grew into full-blown rivalry, and that rivalry shook the city, as by that point, it had been enveloped in its entirety in the web the two siblings had woven. Years have now passed since this Cold War started, with each sibling dealing blows to the other, but never managing to dethrone one or the other. Until now. Leo has heard a particularly interesting rumor at one of the parties he regularly attends. Leia is planning something with a member of the court of a nearby country. The brother leaves this very night to learn what this plot might be, how to stop it, and more importantly, how to turn it against his dear sister. What would Leo find at court? What is Leia plotting? Must these two siblings tear one another apart for this conflict to end? I don't know. I guess we'll never know, since the College of Lies is a lie. It only exists for this video. I made it up. Just kidding. The College of Lies, the new Bard subclass that I made for this video, is in the description right now for 100% certified pony ad free. Go get it. Oh, and if you like this whole thing and want more subclasses and stuff, share this around. I mean it. YouTube is a Venn diagram between what I want to do and what people want to watch, so I'll continue a series if that series does well. So share it around. But what if you want more subclasses? Well, here's a wizard one. It's based on the Final Fantasy Blue Mage. You get to steal abilities from enemies. And this one here is a body horror monk. If you want to try it with the new and improved 2024 monk, this is your chance. All right, bye-bye now. Be good. You mustn't tell lies. Bye. <laughs>